many maps did you take this week? Did you sit back and look at your life and what you're doing? Because health is consciousness and healing is a function of consciousness. So thank you very much for tuning into my real life radio show. You know how we do it here, the Conscious Health Healthcare Hour. We taking a moment to take the deep breath and for the human physical body, we're dealing with that formula, oxygen. Pumps, electricity equals power. And we're talking about that high state of consciousness, power, powering this body, giving it all the energy that it needs to create that balance, that balance of oneness within our own self, self love, self care. We say here that you are creating a new relationship with self. That's the time that it is right now. And that's what we all are doing, you know. We created this world that we see, you know. So many people, so many great people wanted to see this world that we live in. And some of us want to hold on to some old kinds of thinking and don't want to allow the new world that we say we wanted. And I'm talking about the new world of humanity, how we're looking at each other and how we're loving each other. And this is what we have to see and this is what we have to be to one another. But it starts with loving ourselves. And we're talking about health care because that's what I do. Thank you for tuning into my real life radio show. I'm Karen Khadija Davis, folks from Washington, D.C., and I say that I am the one and only conscious self health care educator. I help you understand your body symptoms are sane. This information will regenerate your thoughts to live a stress and disease free life. With conscious self health care moves, mental observation view is essential for yourself. So, how can I help? Help you with health education for longevity and peace. Slay your health care fears. We say false education accepted as reality and false evidence appearing real. And we got to resurrect our frozen energy. And that's what I had to do when I had to sit back and take a look at what was happening in my life, what I was seeing. And so for the past 30 shows since 2015, after my mother made her transition, while she was making her transition, I had to share my life because my life was being played in a real life situation that I wasn't quite aware of, but I've always felt something. I always felt something was going on. So today as we end Tuesday, 27th of 2016, 2016, six, seven, eight, nine. What is your family health legacy? Think about it. You know, because we relearning, we rethinking, and we are rewriting whatever portion or part of our life that's not bringing us harmony, health, and peace. We have to look at it and see what it is that's now allowing us to break through to where we truly want to be at. 
So today, as you take your map periods while you're joining me and tuning into yourself, you're going to ask yourself, what is your family health legacy? What has been left to you? And make that a part of your vision board as I create a vision health care board so you can see and look at what is your life looking like from a health perspective and getting everything in it that you dream and see that you want to have in it. And then you have to ask yourself, what is your health legacy going to be? What are your family, your kids, your community, what are they going to know that it is that you want for your legacy for yourself? And we're talking about shipping out of chronic disease, care, stress. We're all under some type of stress, but we don't have to look at it as stress because stress is turning against oneself. And when you live in harmony and peace with yourself, you won't see your life as stressful even when you do walk upon a journey that doesn't seem in harmony with yourself. It doesn't have to be stressful if you're working from the inside out. And so if your why is big enough, it's not not the why of why things are happening to you. But if your why is big enough, you never give up on what you're doing because you don't give up on yourself because you and yourself is your why. And it has to be a part of that, the you and you, wherever you go. So why and what is my big why? That's what I've been sharing with you. Why I do what I do. And how I do what I do, because it is what I am. And reflection of incident, an incident that made me look at my life and see that my life was being recreated for me to look at my life, to see if I was living the life that I already have lived, that I saw that I was doing ahead of time, before time, or what is time? Time is now. Time is what we're doing. So in reflection of an incident, I will share with you. And I say and have been saying since I've been known about progeny now for anything that's going on with the body, you want to say yes to no. Yes to no, no. Nitric oxide, you want to say yes to it. Oxygen, pumps, electricity, power. And I'm inviting you to come dance with me. Guidance. Come dance with me. Nobody dance like you. Nobody moves like you. Nobody talks like you. You are very unique. You have a unique signature. You are a unique being. And we all vibrate as uniqueness, the individualized expression. But we are all one. And when you see yourself that way as whole and complete, you see your life as whole and complete. And you will see when things are coming into your life that you are not creating. And you will better be able to discern if you're not working from a man-made mindset of human consciousness. Because that's what I call all low-level frequency and vibrations. And when you get caught up in things that's not in harmony and balance with you, then you're giving your thought process. You're giving your imagination. You're giving your life over to something else. And it's not in harmony with you. And so sometimes you have to sit back and take those mental adjustment periods that I have had learned to take throughout my life and see what's going on. So I do know what I am creating. So in reflection of an incident, family, community, and friends, take that deep, 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 deep breath and let it circulate all through your body and make it feel good and feel the harmony and beat of the breath. In reflection of an incident, my heart this morning. There's this pain so deep inside that my emotions see as real. That is why I am crying on the outside. My emotions won't lie still. My pressure is rising. My mind cannot keep still. The visions in mind cannot be real. Life whispers to me to keep it real and just be still. What appears to be true is not always real. Moved by what I say, not by what looks real. It could all be an illusion to keep you from seeing what is truly, truly real. To heal the heart and still the mind, be thankful and grateful that your power is real, that the frequencies of life is aligned with you, and that the universal frequency is really, really real. This energy is real and in control, and your life picture is not to fear. The presence of wisdom is always near. So release as you let go. And recognize this truth. And life can do what it will. The reflections of an incident does not have to be real. 
when you look with a kind and loving heart by just being still. I say take time to consider what is truth and not real. Take time to take that breath and remember what is real. You see, my heart is heavy this morning. There's this pain so deep inside that my emotions see it as real. That is why I am crying on the outside. And sometimes we can look at life and feel like it, that it's so much, so much going on in the opposite direction that everything around it seems real and is not. It's all about the vibration that we're looking and carrying on with our life. And so for me, this poem was written in 2000. And this poem was written after my purse was taken from around friends and we were going on traveling. But I was in a state of of working with non-judgment and non-procrastination. And this was in 2000. I was anchoring myself in that. Anchoring myself away from low frequency vibrations. Anytime something came up, I had to bring it to a high state of frequency. But that 2000 to now, 2016, has been a journey. And for me, when the universe gave me this poem in reflection of an incident... And that's how I'm looking at my life now, 16 years later, which is really 20 years later, which I can almost say 40 years later, in reflections of incidents that seem to be appearing real. And we have to look at what we are creating and knowing the difference of what's being said and being done and how we vibrate to that and give life to that. And so I decided to vibrate to what I know best, and that's myself, oneness and love. What my mother and my father, my community and my family and great people taught each and us and every last one of us what to do. And that was simply to love ourselves and to honor ourselves. And that's how we have to work with the children. And so in 2009, I found myself wanting to share all the information that I had learned through my studies through my education, through information, through um, visionaries and luminaries, putting out their understanding about how they lived their life. And I gather all this information and having studied from the International Academy of Lithology since the 80s and then coming in to realize that I truly wanted to be a lithologist after, you know, my son was born and made his transition. And I thought this was some powerful information. It was some healing information. It nourished me. I believed in it. It came from our system. It came from our government. It came from our structure. I, I brought it and I brought it into my heart where my heart was already feeling this vibration that I am responsible for this body. And so when I got that information, it empowered me to feel better about my life and what I was doing. And so therefore I sent that information out into the community. And I wrote a book in 2009, Step Up Out of the Dark Ages of Healthcare, but it didn't get released. Uh, it got turned back around. But that was okay because I was still sharing the information because I'm not one to know if the information is correctly produced in the book because of my vocabulary and my vernacular and my writing skills. And so when you hire somebody, you think it's done correctly. And the book wasn't, and so it got pulled back. But I think it got pulled back from other reasons because of what was in it and what I was saying and that I was also talking about a pioneering device that was in the makings of coming into fruition. But I want to share with you from that book today, and I happened to write that book in the name of Dr. Khadija Abdul Malik, because I was married to a gentleman in the community at the time this book came out. And so that's how it's titled, and that's how it was released, and then I snatched all the books back. But just as a reminder to us all, one of the things that anchored me in being able to honor myself and what I was sharing was I read a statement in my learnings that said, Dr. Benjamin Rush, Surgeon General of George Washington Army and signer of the Declaration of Independence stated, unless we put medical freedom into the Constitution, the time will come when medicine will organize into an undercover dictatorship to restrict the arts of healing to one class of men conventional orthodox treatment and deny equal privileges to others. All such laws are un-American and despotic and have no place in a republic. The constitution of this republic should make special provisions for medical freedom as well as religious freedom. So I actually thought that responsibility to take care of my body was for me to take care of my body the best way I knew how based on the information that was given to me. And to be able to create that wellness plan as I 
help people do right now with health education. As we take our deep breaths, we relearn and we rethink and we rewrite our very own prescription plan for better health care. And we have to ask ourselves the necessary questions about how we have been caring for our bodies. If it's not really been supportive, what do I need to do and what can I do and what new information do I need to let in? Do I need to empty my cup out, empty my knowledge out and bring some more in? And it may not be conventional and it may not be what I ever heard before or I may a halfway hurt and brought halfway into it. But we all have a right to take care of our human body to the best of our abilities based on the information that we are given to work with. And so in this book, I put that statement in there as well as a disclaimer. And I also put in there a quote by Ron Paul. And he happened to say, when we give government the power to make medical decisions for us, we, in essence, accept the state owns our bodies, and that's why it's time for us to take responsibility and know and make the choices based on the information that is given to us. And there is information that has been given to us, and there's information that has been given to us, and then there's information that is being given to us. And we have to make a discernment in that vibration and what we need to do to make the necessary adjustments for ourselves because somebody is saying that it's your responsibility through your consciousness, the way you think, and the way you take care of your body, that we must incorporate that process in to understanding how this physical body moves and operates, this big battery that we are, this big cell that we are. And so I want you to take a deep breath. We're in the process of honoring ourselves. Today, Kuji Chagulia, self-determination also can be looked at as will, incorporation of all our 12 faculties and principles. But that will, that will is so strong because everybody knows about the law of attraction and all the other laws. And We can will, I'm going to tell you people, we can will some things to us, but if we don't have them by right of consciousness, we cannot keep them or maintain them. And that's why it's always a state of consciousness of quickening ourselves to the right vibration of what we want. Standing in low frequency of vibration will never give us what we truly want. And so as self-determination for me is to create balance, to love myself and honor myself and do it from a point of view where I'm not causing any friction, that I'm allowing and letting things be done decently and in order. Because I have a dream today. I wrote, I have a dream today that you and I would take back our righteous thinking. I ask you to make a paradigm shift in your thinking about your meals and health care right now. I ask you to wake up, everybody. I say it's time to think a new way. I ask you to step up out of the dark ages of health care. What we must understand is if we are going to restore our bodies to health, then we must face the fact that there is no diseases because that's what they tell us. They say there are no cures to be found at the moment in time, 242 years or more. And yes, yes, I believe what they say that this is true. So do you have a disease? Some people say no diseases. The name of the diseases means nothing anymore. They say what you are experiencing is a self-organizing breakdown. What do you say? Can you put that into your wellness plan? Can you ask about your family's legacy and what your legacy will be? Was it a self-organizing breakdown? Ask yourself the question. That's why we must find and take back our righteous thinking. That's loving yourself and honoring yourself and doing what's best for yourself without doing harm to others. Let all things be done decently and in order. Do not give your power to people, places, or things. You are in control of your life. Live by the words, by the actions, and keep a loving mind. We were all granted the right to a good life. We got to stop trying to earn the right. We got to start living the right, being the right, and doing the right by just keeping it simple. You see, nature is no respect of person. It doesn't matter if I have the information. If I don't use it, I'm going to get the same thing. So I want to live in peace and harmony. I want to share love. I want to give us the best opportunity to be to have the best body, to live the best life, to have the best journey that we can have until we decide to leave planet Earth. That's all I want to do is be here and love and harmony 
peace and comfort and joy <laughs> until that time to move on. And so and it begins with knowing that the human body is electrical and we have to really fully understand what that means, you know. And so, again, I'm asking people to look to step up out of the dark ages of health care because everything can change. The whole world has changed uh, meanings and definitions and everything has changed. And we still want to hold on to an old system that we see what it has done to us and it has its glories and it has its purpose and I'm thankful for it but not for the care of my daily body not for keeping me here in pain and struggling I can't see it it makes my body feel weak and feel sad and so I like to feel joy and so I'm trying to find a little bit of happiness for everybody and so I ask myself and I write in this book I'm getting ready to release it again just as it is I asked myself, what message did I want to give to the individual that seeks better health, a better way of living, as well as to regain or maintain their health? The first thought that came to mind was wake up and think a new way. Then I had another thought. What is truly health care? Have we ever really been taught health care? Do we know what health care really is? The best way to care for your health is being, is by being conscious of your thinking, what you are doing, what you know, what you're experiencing, what you're saying, what you're focusing on, your thoughts on yourself, not others. Other people's positions, opinions, issues, or concerns. What is it that you think, what you really feel? You have to really ask yourself and be honest with yourself. And the truth is going to sound utterly, preposterously crazy because nobody's going to be thinking like you're thinking. But I'm here to tell you that it is so many people nowadays that know that the greatest wealth is our health and how we feel about it, and to know that there's many, many opportunities and many, many ways to get energy and maintain energy in this body. And we have to be open up to them, to allow that to come into our lives, to make a change so we can begin to feel better, loving ourselves, loving one another, because that's what's missing in the world. We got to begin with self-love again, and only you can give it to you for you based on what's happening in your life. Because, see, I had to look deep and keep seeing what I've always saw was the love. And that's the love that my mother showed me and raising me because of who I was, this very unique, un crazy little girl that people always said things about. And my mother said, girl, love yourself. Don't worry about people. And I think I took it literally. I took it too literally because it was a part of my soul. And so I've lived my life like that. And I don't mind being who I am because why? I'm doing it. And letting all things be done decently and in order. I'm not doing anything that's not asked of me and sharing. So... It doesn't matter if that person is your spouse, your parent, your child, your friend, your preacher, your teacher, whoever. If you are willing to change yourself and have real love for all things, you can be reborn when you need to be. It's as simple as conscious living through living consciously. Health is all about consciousness and healing is a function of consciousness. And we already know that what you think is what you create, what you imagine is what you bring in your life. And it's such a great opportunity from all the visionaries in the world that have come together that made it possible for us to understand new information and create a better life for ourselves. So I want you to take a deep breath, think about what I just said, and I'm going to take a station break, Jamal, and I'm going to come back and finish sharing with you. What is your family's health legacy and what is your health legacy? Do you feel lost? Do you feel out of sync? Could it be that you are experiencing electromagnetic sensitivity? Yes, electromagnetic sensitivity. Could man-made frequencies interfere with cellular activity and melatonin production? We are beings of frequency, light, and information, and you are your own experience. Do not conform any longer to the patterns of man-made mindset of human consciousness. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Schedule your Nest Provision Human Body Field Scan with Dr. K. 202 Two four eight seven seven four nine. Visit the website for sellife.com. The number four C E L L L I F E dot com. Have the courage to expand your horizon and reprogram your cellular activities. 
Call Dr. K for your 15-minute wellness consultation. 202-248-7749. And unity that will make you better. Community. That's what I'm talking about, family. And my brother. We got to help one another. Show love. We got to work together. It starts with self determination. It starts with love yourself. Stand together when we understand we stand for ourselves. We got to love ourselves. And then we can work better as a community. No one can come between us, family and community, when we communicate with each other. You know, and so in 2012, I had this strange, strange vibration that came over my body like something was going on and I couldn't tell what's going on because people's energy was shifting and things were changing. And I just didn't understand why and what it was all about. But it was a smooth kind of thing. It wasn't like really like, like a like. Yeah, it wasn't really like that, but it was well, something was going on. And so all I know is that I live in peace and harmony and I don't diss people from my life. I don't dismiss people from my life. I don't throw people away. I vibrate to the energy that you show up with and that you're showing me. I work in peace and harmony. I don't work in chaos. I don't work in trying to control anybody, telling anybody what to do, how to be, how to act. I don't do any of that. Uh, I just honor people with the way they show up. And so if you show up a certain way and you're telling me that that's how you are being, then I trust it. Because what this means to me is that you don't complain, you don't fight, you don't argue, you don't quarrel, you don't ridicule, you don't criticize, you don't condemn, find fault, you don't cast blame. So to be a friend is to be kind and loving to yourself. And so I learned that. I learned that I had to be a friend and loving and kind and, and think good about myself. And so when things come to me that look like a challenge and people want to shift their energy and don't want many things to work in harmony, I just remove myself from the situation because that's all I can do because I'm not choosing to be a part of anything else. So when it doesn't look like it always looked and it show us up to be different, I just step away and step back. And if it's going to be anything, it's going to reveal itself. And so I did that. And I didn't understand the shift that people had made, but I knew in 2012 I needed to honor some people that came into my life that made my life better, that made me get the things out that I felt inside of my soul. So in 2012, I honored some people in the community of Washington, D.C. because I don't know, I just knew something was going on and I wanted you to know how much I loved, cared, and respect you. And so I'm going to tell you something. The Dr. Nathan Daniel Kane Self-Key Award that I give out every year for the next year will be the seventh year. It's because if it wasn't for that man's generosity and kindness, there's no way I could be where I'm at and doing what I'm doing now to receive the education and tools that I use. But the greatest gift he gave me was that formula, that 30-step formula from Dr. Samuel C. West. I could read it, but the actual formula, just a little teeny formula, I couldn't even break it out. But when he explained to me how to read a formula, everything in my whole being shifted. And I knew everything that I was reading that I had learned was real and it was true and it was factual and it was scientific and it was how I could able to stand and be assured how to take care of this physical body. And so we have to work together by honoring ourselves and being able to communicate and talk to each other when things don't seem right. Definitely when you know some energy and we're looking from energy and not from that man-made mindset of human consciousness. Take a deep breath. Relax. You're tuned into my real life radio show. And this is my last episode of my real life radio show. Because, like I said, Karen is moving forward. My life has been at a standstill. It's been at a stop. I couldn't understand it. It didn't make any sense that I wasn't receiving clients. I wasn't having students, uh, workshops. Something was going on. But I think that veil has moved out of the way. Because living out loud 
Don't apologize for knowing your self-worth. Don't apologize for knowing who you are. Don't apologize for loving yourself. Don't apologize for being true to yourself. Don't apologize for honoring your family. Don't apologize for being who you are. Don't apologize for accepting the information and believing it and honoring it and knowing it. And don't apologize for letting all things be done decently and in order. Most people would not understand or understand this, but my heart is full of joy and my mind is at peace and my heart is smiling and it's right on time. Because like I said, I was tired and if I had to live on the streets, that's what I got to do because I need to be able to be able to earn an income based on what I do, what so many other people are doing and have been doing for years, long before I was even born, they've been doing what I've been doing. So my doors need to open up and I need to have the opportunity to see that what I say and what I do is received by somebody. So open up my doors. It is in time for others and too late for some. With my one eye closed and my one eye open because of what I've gone through and what I had to see and realize and accept, I accepted the closure of one eye. Because when you saw what I saw and went through what I went through and I had to sit there and be still and listen, something had to give. And so the eyes was the weakest part of my body. And so I'd rather let one eye go and let my mother die with dignity than not. And so... With one eye closed to the outer world and one eye open to the inner world, my soul is singing because Mayor Browse assigns the Death with Dignity Act for Washington, D.C. Yes, it means a lot to me and it means a lot to other people. The Death with Dignity Act, some people say good for the black community. Is it good for the black community? It's good for all human beings. It has nothing to do with race, creed, or color. We have to understand what is happening, what we've been into, and what we see is happening in the world. And so, contrary to proper belief, blacks in America tend to be more conservative, especially when it comes to long-established attitudes about religion, family, education, and politics. This is an article from the Washington Informer newspaper, November 17, 2016. The council voted 11 to 2 in favor of the bill, and D.C. Mayor Brown says... Browser says, while she's not sure if she will sign the bill, she did sign the bill this week in the Washington newspaper. Mayor Browser signs Death with Dignity Act. She talks about that in the Washington form of this week's newspaper. But it says that, and so after more than a year of intense deliberations among opponents and advocates, advocates and legislators, Washington, D.C. became the seventh jurisdiction nationwide to allow the practice Historically, African Americans do not intend to support suicide in any form or fashion because I say it's not suicide, it's death with dignity because they have been living what they've been living with and believing what they've been believing and going through what they've been going through and they're believing that there's no hope. And so when there's no hope, that's what people want to do, but we just have to give it labels as humans as we do anything else in life. And so, needless to say, the district now bears the distinction of being the first predominantly black community, which D.C. is not black community at this time of the signing of this information right here. This, the status has changed in the District of Columbia. But in the U.S., the legislation has now been reformed to a death with dignity. We will need to watch what unfolds. We'll need to keep our eyes on our senior citizens and those who have little to say in their personal lives and affairs so that they are not, as some fear, cursed into an early death. No, we cannot. There's a lot of people that's been living, and we know the difference, and we can tell the difference when you understand what has been going on with a person. In the District Chronicle News, when they reported about uh, the Death with Dignity Act being signed in Washington, D.C., they said... um, the city council in the nation's capital has overwhelmingly voted for a bill that would allow terminally ill people and medically assisted death. That makes Washington, D.C. the sixth jurisdiction nationwide to approve this opponent's all physician-assisted suicide. The bill would legislate it for those who have six months or less to live who do not suffer from depression and who request the option several times because they're in so much pain and told that there is no way out of the pain. It allows someone who is on death's doorstep to the option to choose a peaceful dignity, a peaceful death. Council member Mary 
I believe her name is Shahi, C-H-E-H, the sponsor of the bill, said just before the Tuesday, November vote, Nancy December has been signed in. Because it's true, it's so many people that are really, really don't want to continue to see their parents and loved ones and community people suffer. And knowing that there's no way out. And so people have a right after they've been told and did everything they were supposed to do and done everything and, and nothing seemed to work for them and got them out of that state that they were in. And so it was a long time for them. And family members don't want to see other family members go through that because they're looking and they're seeing. They've seen this pattern. seen how things been. And so my family left instructions. And all I could do was follow them. And for somebody to try to make me think or feel or put into a situation that my mother didn't love me and that I wanted money and a house and all that kind of stuff, that's crazy. That's craziness because my family was built on love, and that's all that's in my heart, and that's all I wanted for my mother. I could have been left. I could have went away. I could have made money. I could have did a lot of stuff. But energy said stay here and stay here with my mother, and that's something that's difficult for a person like for me to do that sense energy and feels information. And so I had to make a choice, and that choice was to honor the life that my mother had lived and who she was and my family. And so that's all I was doing. I wasn't trying to do anything else. And I was living my truth of the information that was shared to me, that was told to me. And so I honor that. And so I'm hoping that the doors is going to open up because all the noise that has been put in my field and my vibration, this human body that I am, is giving off of this energy. And as we all do, because we all can look at ourselves as a random event generator, and that's what they use in bioenergetics for health screening. And it's pattern after you, who you are. Your consciousness and your intuition creates a field, the field around the cells. The fields are connected to the fields of life, and it's this big energy field, and we all just need to just feel the love of this energy field and start loving each other and allowing people to take better care of themselves and make the changes and shift that they want. And these laws that we have to have just to live as human beings is getting crazy. And uh, I just want to create harmony and peace, and that's all I do in my life, and that's what I want to share with my community, the world, humanity, to look at our world, to see what we're doing, and let's make a change because we can, because we have so many people that have shown us for years and years that we can make this change. And so I'm hoping that 2017 will be what I am creating, peace, love, and harmony, and an opportunity for people to see where they are in their health paradigm, to make a self-gnosis, to make a conscious Self-health care choice to sit back, take a breather, look at your legacy, look at what you're creating for your life, seeing if you're liking it, come to get some new information and seeing if you can create a better wellness plan for yourself because that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants everybody to get well so they can think well, be well, act well, and do well. So it's time to live in love and harmony. So I'm going to let Jamal set up. Because when I come back in 2017, I'm coming back with a new theme song. And I'm going to play a little bit of it, and then I'm going to come back and lead out with this poem called Guidance. Because I want you to come dance with me. Because nobody danced like you. And check out what your human body feel got to say. So Jamal, when you get a chance, let's go ahead and play that song for about three, four minutes, five minutes. And then I can close out the show. Because it's time to love and allow our loved ones to let go. Get up. Shake that body. Take them deep breaths. This is what we're going to be doing next year. Come on now.
right. Let your mind and your body be free. Come on and dance with me. Come on, community. Got enough love and all there is. Community. Come dance with me in 2017. We talked about reaching a high consciousness. We talked about getting happy. We talked about wake up everybody. We talked about love one another. I want you to know that you are a unique individual and nobody dance like you. Nobody vibrate like you. Nobody has a signature like you. And so I know my signature. I know my vibration. I know what I'm sending out and I know what I'm doing. And what's being showed and what's being displayed is not who I am. Look inside and see what it really looks like because I project who I am. And I do nothing but give love and honor and respect to this human body that we move around in, that we live in. And so I'm inviting you, if everything is going to be all right and those doors are going to open up, And let me see what my own life can create by sharing what I share and the information that is given to me and the way that I practice healthcare and the way that I work as a lymphologist, as a bioenergetic wellness specialist. And I use the tools that I use, the Max Pulse system and the Nest Wellness tools. But like I say, you are your biggest battery and you are your greatest random events generator because you are in control of your life. And so... I can begin to honor myself and love myself even more and greater and release and let go because as I close out and share with you in 2016, guidance, God, you and I dance and we as humanity have to look and understand that we are this still analog as well as we this high fabric, high fabric optic fiber individual energetic light individual life energetic life and we are uh, this energetic battery we are this we are not a machine though so when we say god we understand the higher state of consciousness the vibration that we are and a lot of people sometimes play with that word and turn it around and start talking about dog because you get your greatest admiration to yourself and you have two sides of yourself, sympathetic, parasympathetic, fight or fight, the animal instinct. So we got to take care of our human body the same way we honor and take care of the dogs in the world. Because sometimes I swear I think we care more about dogs and animals than we do about human life and how we are living and how we are moving on this earth. And so remember, God, you and I dance. It's a particle, it's a wave, it's a spiral. And that is what we are. And we have got to get back in alignment with the world that we want to create, the world that we want to see in the world want to be in. So in 2017, I invite you to come dance with me because God, you and I dance. There's a poem coming to me, the title I can see, God dance. But where are the words? All I hear is God, you and I dance. Like lyrics, the rhythm, the rhyme, God, you and I dance. Like the ocean waves, the sky, the moon and the sun, God, you and I dance like birds, fishes, animals and other creatures of the sea. I say, God, you and I dance like breath, the breeze and the air we breathe. (sighs) God, you and I dance. There is a poem coming to me. The title I can see guidance. But where are the words? All I hear is God, you and I dance like Jesus, Moses, prophets, saints and apostles. God, you and I dance like M. Hope Tep, kings and queens of ancient Kemet. God, you and I dance. 
like angels, divine guides, and ancestors. I say, God, you, and I dance like laughter, smiles, and singing out loud, and dancing in harmony with the beat of the drum. I say, God, you, and I dance like listening to bees, the trees, oh, and the whisper in the breeze. God, you, and I dance. I am you, and you are me. As I honor myself, I honor thee. In the land of I am that I am, you see, God, you, and I dance. The power of life is in the consciousness of the man. You see, God, you, and I dance. Oxygen pumps electricity equals power. Sell your power for the human wellness. The body feel for divine wellness must all become one. Your thoughts are the only thoughts that create your life. Your vision and mind are the only images that create your life. See your true light. Understand your vibration, your signature. That's right. Stop and be still. It's reflection time. God, you, and I dance. There is no separation. There is no separation. And we realize there is no separation in our consciousness and our oneness and our subconscious mind that we are creating now what we want. And we have the power to do that right now and the power to keep this body powered at a very high charge state. And that's what we want to focus on. And that's what we want to create And no matter where you are right now, you can change your thoughts and say, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the greatest of them all? And the mirror said to you in reflection and looked back and said, I found the greatest love of all inside, right there, inside as you, looking out as you, bringing you back inside to you. It's all one. It's you. And I could survive through this. It's not what it looks like. This hoax, this whatever it was. I survived because I love and honor and I respect myself. And I respect my parents. And I respect what humanity, what life has taught me and showed me. And no matter what it said, no matter what you're going through, love yourself enough to take yourself higher than the situation that you see. Because that situation does not have to be your reality. If you love yourself Dig a little deeper and know that we can create life straight from imagination to manifestation. And that's when things truly happen for us. So I drew the wisdom card yesterday and I asked the question and I said, I am in alignment with. And I picked the spirit card and it says methods of healing must take into account the energetic or spiritual condition that is in turmoil, thereby affecting the physical condition. If you focus only on the physical translation of the underlying energetic disorder, then you are ignoring the source of the physical illness. <sighs> the human body field governs the physical field, but they work together as one. And it's time that we accept that reality and make shifts in our own life. This spirituality car was created by, I don't want to mispronounce the name, so it's M A L I D O M A. It's the first name. And the last name is S-O-M-E. And the person was born in 1956. Therefore, they are still alive today. And I will go and check out who this person is. M-A-L-I-D-O-M-A. S-O-M-E. Born 1956. And he states, methods of healing must take into account the energetic or spiritual condition that is in turmoil thereby affecting the physical condition. If you focus only on the physical translation of the underlying energetic disorder, then you are ignoring the source of the physical illness. Let's turn that into wellness. Let's do it together. Let's work in peace and harmony. And thank you for joining me on my journey as I share what I was seeing and what I had to unfold to see what was happening in my life and know The love is all there is, and all I give and generate is love, and all I see is love, and I'm always here because I'm never dismissing, throwing anybody away, and all I give is love, and if you come and show me love, that's what I give you back is love. If I see anything different, I just remove myself because 
I was taught not to stay in stressful situations, to just walk away and create a better life. So we all can do that. So take our deep, deep breath together. For the last time this year in 2016, and let's feel it from the tip of our toes, and let's feel ourselves bringing in that negative charge, and let's feel ourselves putting in a spark in our body, and let's feel that energy rise as we raise and we stretch out our hands and we hold our heads high, and we know who we are, and we love ourselves. And we know the ultimate stress buster is to release and let go. Let go of all mental attitudes associated with stress, worry, fear, anger, loss, or temper, holding grudges, and resentment. We must love ourselves enough to love our enemies. But if you have no enemy in yourself, you see no enemy without. It's really time for us to honor and love ourselves and know thyself. And don't worry about being light. We have to like ourselves. And don't worry about being accepted, because when we accept ourselves, we accept all others in non-judgment. We accept ourselves. Don't worry about being loved, because, see, I had to love myself beyond measure, because what I knew couldn't possibly be be true, because I know that everybody knows that I love my mother. Don't worry about having friends. I had to be a friend to myself, and then I could really see my friends. And I saw their energy more than I saw their words. And so that's why I may have backed away from some people, because I saw that heartache was showing up. And don't worry about fitting in, because Karen can't fit into anything but herself. Because like they say, if it don't fit, you must have quit. You got to let it go and move on to something else that makes you feel good. So don't worry about knowing nobody else. Just know yourself. And in the great words of my mom that I found that she wrote, and she said, as far as our beliefs go, believe you can, believe you can, and people can make you believe anything they want, but you got to know what you believe in. And my mother said, beliefs. You want your beliefs to change. It's proof that you are keeping your eyes open, living fully and welcoming, that the world and people around you can teach you. She said this means that people's beliefs should evolve as they gain new experiences. Shirley R. Hardy and my mother gained new experiences on a health care journey, but sometimes your body is so weak. As long as you're feeling good, you may can't gain your health back, but you can lead with dignity and the way that you live your life. So let's look at our beliefs and let's let go. Because in that middle belief, they say is the word lie. But also there's the word be. So it's time for us to be, to know what we're creating, to know what we're doing, and to honor ourselves. And that's what I'm here for, to help you with health education for longevity and peace, the arc of self-healing and self-help. 1997, Organization for the Prevention of Disease Care, to help you understand that we create cellular malfunctions and we can adjust this body when we understand just a little teeny bit about cell life and how do we take care of this human body that we are. So thank you for joining me on my journey. Look forward to the books that's coming out. You can also get my journey in the book 100 Voices, 100 Voices of Inspiration, Empowerment and Awakening, Inspiration, Awakening, and Empowerment is on my office page on my website, ConsciousSelfCare.com, C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S-E-L-F-Care.com. Get that book now since November the 22nd. I'm looking forward to being a part of the anthology. Oh, women of purpose, power, and passion. That book will be out in March, and look for my book. Moving from disease care to conscious self-health care. Releasing my book, Tuning to Yourself Through the Magic of Poetry. And I just want everybody to feel good and feel better. And so, have a great year. Remember all the principles in life that's supposed to help you be a better person, help you live a better life. And the only way you can do that is to honor yourself. Put yourself first. Respect yourself. Use your voice when you need to. But remember to let everything be done decently and in order. And your life will be just the way you created it. And you'll know when that noise come in on the line, 
you know how to shift your energy, change that vibration, change that static, raise your consciousness, and live a better life. So the thought just came to me, and it came from Dr. Coretta Smiley. She said, Karen, remember, do what you're doing. She said, keep clarity and charity in your voice. And don't get so excited about what you're doing because sometimes people get scared because you can get real excited about wanting to help people bury disease thinking and learn the new information and step up out of the dark ages of disease care that you might run them off a little bit. It's a slow process, but if that's what you want, family, I'm telling you, you can create it for yourself. So a fantastic finishing of 2016 and prayfully and hopefully I will see you in 2017 because if I can take care of myself then I can take care of radio show so thank you very much you have a great life and a great week and breathe life into your body and come aboard my friendship chain and dance with me You know we can think of no better place. Thank you for listening to Heart to Heart Healthy Living. Wow. We had a great time. And thank you for joining us and sharing this radio show with a friend. Now tune back next week, Tuesday, from 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. We invite you to visit ConsciousSelfCare.com. C-O-N-S-C-I-O-U-S-E-L-F care.com and join the Conscious Self Health Care movement. Health is consciousness and healing is a function of consciousness. You have a God-given right to choose your pathway to health care and wellness. I'm Karen Khadija Davis, folks, and tune in next Tuesday, Heart to Heart. Thank you.